Let's start with a look at the objectives that are across the top face of the COSO cube. Now we have four categories of objectives, strategic, operations, reporting, and compliance. Strategic objectives are those high-level goals aligned with the mission of the organization. Strategic objectives are those very same objectives that have been defined as critical to the success of corporate strategy. Consider such examples as achieving a 60% market share or maintaining a technological leadership position in the industry. Strategic and operational objectives may be subject to externalities that are beyond the control of management. And in these instances, our enterprise risk management system provides reasonable assurance that the board is notified in a timely manner as to the extent of progress towards the achievement of these objectives. You don't often think about enterprise risk management as having much of a role to play in delivering strategy. But as we work through the framework, you'll see that risk management has everything to do with meeting your strategic objectives. Next, we have operational objectives. And operational objectives are those goals describing the effective and efficient use of resources. Consider such operational objectives as maintaining a defect rate less than 0.1% of production or achieving a plant availability of 95% or containing overtime hours to less than 2% of the total hours worked. These sorts of objectives are important because obviously they impact profitability but also product quality and customer service. All of the things that are necessary for a business to be successful. The risk management framework provides structured guide rails to keep the organization on track to meet these objectives. Now reporting objectives address the reliable internal and external reporting. Internal reporting is important to ensure that the key indicators are measured and monitored to enable management to take action whenever necessary. Now external reporting is important to ensure that the organization meets the needs of its stakeholders. So consider the impact of the continued flow of capital that is necessary to meet the strategic objectives. A lot of time in recent years has been spent focusing in on internal controls over financial reporting. To comply with Sarbanes-Oxley Act in the US and National Instrument 52109 here in Canada. The COSO model underpins much of this work, but is only focused in on one of the four objectives of ERM. In our discussions, we are looking at considering all four objectives, but with the same framework that you likely have some experience with that was used to address the certification requirements. Lastly, we have compliance objectives. Compliance objectives ensure conformance with all applicable laws and regulations. So for example, compliance with health and safety regulations, hazardous material regulations, uh, environmental protection, securities laws, civil laws. Failure to meet a compliance objective can result in a significant fine or even threaten going concern. So obviously we need to have a mechanism in place to monitor progress towards the achievement of these sorts of objectives as well. Now a particular objective may fall into more than one category, the same way a single objective may be the responsibility of more than one executive. The categorization doesn't impact how the framework is applied. What's important for you to understand in this session is that the objectives of risk management don't exist in isolation. The objectives contemplated by this dimension of the COSO framework often begin with those identified already in the strategic and operating plans of the business. But we should not be limited in our thinking and we must consider all objectives, explicit or implied, to bring context to our risk management plan. With that in mind, let's move on to the actual application of the COSO framework itself, which is where the next video will begin. So until next time, don't stop to get to the top. When you get to the top, don't stop.